even in Mexico, when I opened up the Bible, when I was, you know, really hooked on crack, it it, it just ex explains so much and just, it makes the testimony so much stronger in my life. Like for me to realize, wow, man, you're, you're, you're awesome. Like your mercy, you're, you're, even when I forgot about you, you never forgot about me. And Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I spit to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I Went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to give back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. What's up guys, my name is JC, I am Wrong and Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, <laughs> mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. Suerte la suburba, cause we're about to go see Jesus. <laughs> What's up guys? <sighs> Look at his name. Gotta give him the glory first. You, it, it's funny now that I, I've spent more time I guess you could say in peace. Uh, you know, more of, of my life is starting to make sense now. I wanted to make a series where I I know today God God has always been there. He's always been there. He's always gonna be there. He He is a loving Father that wants to be there. We forget. We run away. We stop. But I want to make a series where I strongly believe that you know God God has always been there. Always. And this just. It's just more proof on top of more proof. Just it's like scripture on top of, on top of scripture. Just uh, making the testimony that much stronger. When I first got to the Mexican prison, I, I went to go live where the people that had money lived. Most of them, yes, were, were drug lords, drug dealers. Others were bank robbers. Some were cops that were working with the cartel and got caught. But in this unit, you had hot water, showers, toilets. Uh, it was a very clean unit. It got cleaned twice a day. They called it talacha. It means like clean. So everybody that lived there paid for it because they had money. It had its own grocery store. It had its own restaurants. It even had its own Starbucks. I mean, not a Starbucks place, but <laughs> they sold coffee, tea, you know, hot drinks. They would give you these little cardboard cards and that would be your credit card. I had like 20 from drugs to liquor to food to restaurants to Starbucks. So you got this kid, he's 18 years old, right? Thinking he, he just made it big time because he's now in a federal prison in Mexico surrounded by nothing but drug dealers, drug lords. I was one of the youngest ones there. They called me Pollito, little chicken. <laughs> you know, I, I started to drink a lot, a lot, a lot, because deep down inside, I was very, I was just very lost. I, I started to do a lot of cocaine, a lot of cocaine, and weed, pills. You know, Mexico is where I discovered pills. You know, I had really never messed around with pills, but they had so many over there that it was just, it was, it was bad. It was bad. I ended up in the hospital lots of times for alcohol poisoning. Um, there was lots of times I just felt like I was gonna OD just from so much, so much drugs. 
you know, time passed and I ended up getting hooked on, on crack, crack cocaine. From the very first hit, I got hooked. Very first hit. From that day on, I lived for that chase. I started chasing it. I got up every day at five in the morning. First thing I went to go do was go get a rock. I, I would start smoking. It, it got so bad that I, I sold everything in my cell. I sold, you know, I had, at one time I had my, my own cell. I sold everything, the TV, the carpet, the bed, everything. It was, my cell was completely empty. I had one pair of shoes, a one, one pair of pants and a t-shirt. And I almost became like, I guess you could say the joke of that unit because uh, here I was when I came in with my with my Nike windbreaker shoes, and my, my gold chain, and I was always eating at the restaurants, and everybody used to, you know, just see me always out. I never ate nothing from the prison, never, I always got my clothes washed. Everything was like top of the line. Well, now I was an embarrassment. Now I was a joke because now I, I looked really bad, you know, running around. I looked dirty, my hair was long. I, I had be become a, a, a crack addict. I ended up getting kicked out of that unit and that's a story. Everything, <sighs> my life has been a story of roller coasters. Everything's tied up to another story. I ended up getting kicked out of that unit for getting into a fight with the wrong person. Um, now I'm in unit two, where it's dark, dirty. All the local uh, Mexican gang members live there, so they're all there for murders and, you know, just <laughs> the, the, the scary of the scary, you know. It, it's really, really dark unit. Uh, it's never cleaned. There was about a hundred snot hawkers all over the floor. You had to be careful how you walked. It was just a very, very dirty place with a lot of very, very dangerous people. In this unit, you had people living 10 per cell instead of like a unit eight where it was one or maybe two. I honestly felt like I was, I was going to die. They sent me there to get killed. They sent me there to die. The first week that I was in that unit, man, I didn't, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep at all. I just kept one eye open. I was, I was just kind of just waiting for them to kill me. I started to share my drugs because at the time I was still, you know, even at the, my lowest point, I was still getting about a thousand bucks here and there and, in, in, you know, wire transact transactions and I started to share my drugs just to be safe, but my crack use was getting like really out of control and, you know, now I was I was cleaning rooms, I'm, I'm washing clothes now. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm running for drugs. <laughs> and this is what I mean where I say like, my, my story is like so crazy because it's like a story on top of a story. So, I've always been fast. I've always been a fast sprinter. I, I, can, I, I can run and I had lost all my weight from being on cracks. So I was really skinny. So the drug dealers were so bored that they, they bet on everything in there. They bet on the soccer games. The soccer games are some of the most violent sometimes uh, pastimes there because they, they'll start getting into fights and they start stabbing people and it just gets really bad. But, you know, they bet on everything. So they got into a little trend where they were having people race, you know, sprints. And they would bet big, big money, and and they were having guys in wheelchairs race. They were having guys on crutches race. Uh, you name it. It was entertainment, right? So, the big time uh, drug dealer there that I used to work for, he knew that I was fast, so he would pay me a pesado, that's a, a gram. He would pay me a gram, and I would go out there and, and just I would kill it. I would win. I would race. <laughs> I was like, honestly, I mean, to be honest, man, I, I, I felt like I was the prison joke, you know, like it, it was, it, it was that bad, you know, I, I had went from being on top and to crashing all the way, you know, and burning. <laughs> it, it was all gone. My money was gone. My, my friends, they had transferred to other prisons, my reputation, my moral, you know, I mean, I, I was, 
I'm not proud of it, but I was having sex with older Mexican women for, for money. Like I, I was completely lost to, to sin, emptiness. I, I mean, it was all bad. I was at a very low point in my life. The people that wanted to kill me for all the money that I owed them, like I, I was just, I was just waiting pretty much. I mean, it got to the point where I owed close to 15 grand in there. Everyone had to cut me off and they, they wanted blood or, or money. For the next six months, I pretty much didn't leave my unit. I knew they were gonna try and kill me, so I had to play it safe. I had to kind of drive and maneuver around it. I. I had pretty much nothing left at this point. I was getting high on paint thinner at this at this time because now er everything had stopped. Money had stopped, visits had stopped, everything had stopped. Everybody had left that I knew. So it was it was paint thinner, you know. It was frying the crap out of my brain. Uh, one day, just out of nowhere, I, I, I walked over to, they had a really small chapel and, and right in the middle of, of the prison. And uh, I went over there and, and I got a Bible. And I, I ran back to my cell because I was, I was embarrassed. I was uh, uh, like ashamed. Like I didn't want people to see me with the Bible. And uh, I, I just fell to my knees inside the cell. I, I, I still remember everything to this day uh what color the cell was how the sun was coming in through the window i, I mean i opened the bible and i cried i cried and i, I just i just knew that i needed help I didn't read nothing. I would be lying to you if I said that I read I read anything off off the Bible that day because I didn't. I didn't read nothing. I, I closed it, put it down, and from that day on, I, I never smoked crack again in that Mexican prison ever. And things did get better for me. The the locals started to befriend me. Um, they started sharing their food with me and. You know, San Luis Potosí has a lot of great food. <laughs> One of the guys said I could date his sister. Like, life was, was good. Like, was good. I had, I had spoken too soon because the, the guys that wanted that money that I owed, the guys that I owed money to, uh, were wondering why I was still around. And they were wondering why I was doing good. Because now, you know, I am hanging out with the locals. I'm coming in and out. You know, I'm, I'm going to go get food from the cafeteria. So I'm coming back. Uh, uh, very, very humbling moment. That day, I, I kind of felt and I kind of knew that they were, they were going to try and kill me. They were all gathered up in front of the unit. And they were very, very mad and upset that I was, you know, still around. They came to the front of the unit, but my new, you know, local friend stepped in and I ended up getting a pass. You know, that was the pass that, that I needed because three months later, the American consul came, came and got me. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say, you know, I'm, and I'm talking to all the people that understand me, that have been where I've been and have done the things that I've done and, and, and stuff like that, you know, God has always been there and he will always be there. He's been there before you were there. And there's moments in your life that you probably didn't see his hand over you, but that's, that's okay. Like Pastor Ray says, he's not looking for perfection he's looking for faithfulness well what I'm saying is stay faithful it does not say stay perfect
And what I believe a lot of Christians, especially, well, no, all, I'm, whenever you first come into Christianity and you're seasoned Christian, sometimes the, the, the closer we get to God, the more we see our failures and our faults. You remember Peter, whenever he was, he was walking with Jesus and he saw him, he goes, depart from me for I'm a sinful man. Because the closer that you walk with God, the more and more you're going to see your sins and the more and more you're disappointed with them. When you first get saved, you have a whole lot of sin lists that God's not even convicting you yet. He's like, let's just get you to stop watching this, right? Let's get you to stop doing this. We'll work on it. And what happens is your seasoned Christians are trying to judge off of their convictions after 10 years of Christianity and place it on this guy. And this guy ain't there yet. Religion and tradition is what gets people out of Christianity. Hey, let God, let the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that convicted you can convict him. Quit trying to be God. It says faithful, not perfect. There's only one who's perfect, and his name is Jesus. The author, the perfection of our faith. He's the author of our faith, the finisher of our faith, and he's still writing your story. You're still writing, even if you've made a mistake today on the way to church. It's all right. There's another chapter. There's another page. God is still using your story. It says stay. I'm saying stay faithful. No, this is a life journey. This is a school that we're going to be in for the rest of our lives. And we have jobs that we need to do. We need to disciple. We need to tell people about Jesus. We need to preach the gospel. And tell the young men and women the truth. My name's JC. I am Wrong Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage and remember, live for him. Money back guarantee.